All right, folks, from the shores of the Great Slave Lake right here in Yellowknife, Northwest Territories, Canada, straight to Vancouver, I think, with Cone of some 41. Did, did I get that right, Cone? Or are you in Vancouver right now? Yeah, Vancouver, Canada. We're just uh, we're going to be playing the Commodore Ballroom tonight. Right on, right on. Well, well. You, now I know that uh, you you guys are on uh, a, a tour right now uh, that that has a bit of a, uh, an interesting title. Uh, I think it's called "Don't Call It a a Sumback Tour," but I mean, you know, to to a certain extent, I suppose it kind of is a sumback, even though we're not supposed to say that, are we? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I, you know, a lot of people are calling it a comeback tour. Um, I mean, we've been away for three years, so I guess um, I, people are somewhat right but we just feel like I mean the band never really uh, like we didn't break up so I don't think I, I don't think that we consider it really a comeback to her it's just kind of like we went away for two years and now we're doing it again yeah yeah, well, now rewinding this back to, uh, you know, to 2013, uh, as I mentioned off the top, uh, you know, Derek was hospitalized and, and things were looking pretty grim. I mean, where where were you when you when you found out about Derek's condition and, you know, who let you know and, and what was your uh, initial reaction, Cone? Uh, well, it was, it was kind of a, you know, it was a dark time leading up to that, um, you know, when the tour ended. You know, we weren't really on great terms, and we knew his alcoholism was getting really bad. Uh, so when the tour ended, we kind of just went our separate ways. We went, we all went home, and Derek and I actually didn't really talk for over a year. Wow! Um, I just heard stories through. I, I heard th- stories through friends and stuff like that that he was really starting to drink even heavier than he was before, which kind of blew my mind because he was drinking pretty heavily on tour. Um, so, you know, when I got, I think it was, uh, it was my manager, uh, Chris, who called me and said Derek was in the hospital and he had collapsed and I was at home and I, you know, just a thousand different emotions went through my body. Cause I've known Derek since so we started this band in high school and I've known since I was 14 years old. So yeah. it was kind of like, you know, the band thing kind of goes out the window at that point and it's more like, oh my God, I'm, am I going to leave my friend? Yeah. Um, and luckily he pulled through and. You know, then when we got out of the hospital, we reconnected and we hadn't spoken, like I said, in over a year. So it was basically just like, you know, first and foremost, like, how are you doing? We got to get you better. And, you know, he explained what happened. And then we just kind of started to rekindle our relationship as friends again before the band um, conversation even got started. And then after we, you know, after we talked a few times, we started talking to the band and the prospect of, hey, do you want to be a band again? Yeah, and we both did, and uh, but now we're here. <laughs> yeah. you know, a well, year and a half later. And big, big news about this this record too is that Dave's back, and I I know you know a, a lot of Dave's coming back. Maybe kind of had to do a little bit with Derek's. Uh, Derek's health, and then of course his, you know, his sobriety a little later on. But I, I know he's he's now he's been quoted as saying that every single one of some some forty one at at different times has had a bit of a gut check. I mean, is that true? Like, what was your gut check, Cone? Like, like in terms of your own struggles? Well, yeah. I mean, the thing about our band was we always like from this, from since we're seventeen, eighteen years old, we are all, we all party pretty hard. Yeah. Um, we. We were always looking for, like, where's the bar, where's the after party, and blah, 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 all this stuff. So, I mean, I don't, I think Dave was probably the least into that, but, you know, Steve, Derek, and I were definitely on the party train a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I don't know if I ever really had a gut check in a way of, like, oh, I got, you know, I have to watch my drinking. I mean, there's mornings where, where I woke up and they're like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm alive right now. <laughs> like, I'm there most, you know, teenagers do sometimes. Yeah. But, um, you know, I just think that, you know, throughout the years, and you know, there's a hard party for your 20s, you always think you're invincible. And that's, that's the thing. Is, and when you get to, you know, now we're 36 years old, you can't party like that like you used to. You're not 22 anymore. Your body doesn't rebound like you used to. Um, yeah. And I think that's kind of what happened to Derek was, uh, you know, he just thought, you, you get that mentality of, like, I'm invincible. I can do whatever I want. My body is just going to react. And it didn't. And yeah. unfortunately, he wound up in the hospital. Um so, yeah, I mean, the band just, we always kind of did that, and he just took it, I guess, one step too far. Yeah, yeah. And that happened, yeah. 
I I know uh, you know Derek has talked about his recovery a little bit in terms of the fact that he literally learned had to learn how to walk again, how to talk again, and even play the guitar again. So, you know, yeah. it, with his with his process and getting back into writing, I mean, what you know, how how has your support of Derek been in terms of of the musical side? Yeah, I mean, once he got out of the hospital, he was sending, and we had the conversations with the band. He was sending demos pretty quickly. Like wow. he sent, you know, four or five demos of new songs, and I thought they were great right away. And a lot of the demos he sent way back then are on the album right now. Uh-huh. So you know, he was writing really strong songs right away, yeah. and we were bouncing ideas back and forth. You know, he'd send me some stuff, and hey, play bass on these songs, I'd play bass on them, send them back. We go back and forth, and we we're doing it kind of. He was in L.A. and I was in Toronto, so we were doing it across North America. We weren't even doing it together. And then eventually we got together and, uh, you know, I'd go down to LA and we'd, we'd jam some stuff and, you know, I'd play, you know, we'd work on it in person together. Yeah. So it was like a, it was a, a little bit of a long process because it, the, the recording process was about a year and a half. That's right, yeah. And it was just, ch- ch- you know, chunks of songs here and there. Like it wasn't like we had 14 songs and we all got into the studio and just recorded them all over two months. Yeah. So like, okay, I got four songs. Okay, I got another three now. So just like that kind of thing. It was more relaxed and we didn't have a record label. Like, so we did this whole album without a record label. Yeah. We had so much freedom to yeah. do whatever we wanted. Yeah, well, I was going to mention that now, like without a label and, and getting to the, the crowdfunding, which which is a very popular way for many bands to, uh, you know, put, put together funds for an album. I mean, like this allowed you to take your time. You didn't have label guys, you know, breathing down your neck, forcing you to... Uh, to uh, you know, produce and 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 I'm um, you know as you as you mentioned, I mean that was very very freeing and and it also gave Derek the time to recuperate and and to do his thing in, in his own time as well. Yeah, I think that was I think that was crucial for Derek because you know when I I could only imagine going through what he went through and then to have some label breathing down your neck and the stress of that would have just probably been too much for him. So I think just having Bowen breathing down his neck and just kind of doing it on his own while recovering as well, which is hard enough. Yeah. Because I think it was just like, you know, a blessing in disguise for him. And, you know, it was nice to not have like records like a and calling you up there, hey, I'm going to stop by the studio and check out the new <laughs> songs. He's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want you here. <laughs> so we didn't have any of that. And uh, so it was, it was nice this time around. How, how'd you hook up with Hopeless Records, Cone? Uh, it was it was our manager that was kind of like, um, you know, sending stuff around, seeing, you know, putting some feelers out, I guess, different labels, and Hopeless was on the list, and they seemed the most interested. Like, we, we started a tour in January, a Korean tour in, in the UK, and mm-hmm. they flew from California all the way up to, I think it was Dublin. To wow. Do and, you know, you know, we did the whole, you know, drink and dinner and they just were so into the band and fans of the band and knew everything about the band. And so they just seemed like the logical, you know, and they got great stuff on the label, other bands. Yeah. And they just seemed like the best fit for us at the time, like right now. Yeah. Well, and I mean, I, I would imagine you're confident enough in them, you knowing that, you know, when the time comes for the next record to roll around, that you're going to have that same freedom, right? I mean, I would imagine that would be part of the discussion. Yeah. I, I don't think we could ever go back. Um, just like having that, Nice freedom of doing things time wise the way you want to do it. It's always nice. Like, we recorded, I remember recording, when we had All Killer No Fill Around in 2001. I remember being on the road mm-hmm. and Derek was writing songs in the back of the bus for those who were infected. Yeah. And then so we had two months off in between tours and it was like, okay, now we got to go record those who were infected. Yeah. And it can't be a day later because we have another tour book. Yeah. And so it was like, we had this deadline. And, you know, I love those looking like as a record, but it was like, that's a very stressful thing for a 22-year-old. To, you know, you're following up, you know, songs like Fat Lip and MTV, which were really big for us. And, you, and they were given two months to go record the follow-up to that. So, yeah. you know, that was a stressful time, I remember. So this was a little bit, you know, more relaxed. Well, especially that you've got your whole career before that first one to write songs. I mean, you know, that, that that's why maybe there is such thing as sophomore jinx with bands because there's there's less turnaround time to actually write the songs. Well, that's it, too. I mean, especially when the album, you know, did as well as it did for us. It's like you almost you almost want the same amount of time. You want to like maybe take a year off to make sure that the next album is going to be just as good. Yeah. But that's not the way, you know, record labels major way, you know, you know, at the time, it's like, hey guys, it's, it's all about momentum and you 
can't go away for a year. You have to stay in the limelight. And it's just, you know, it's for a lot of bands, it doesn't really work out because they, they're not given the, enough time. Yeah. Um, you know, luckily, luckily, we, you know, we had some, some good songs on that record and it was a strong <laughs> record for us, but yeah, you know, it doesn't look like that, you know? So so now Dave is back, which means there's three guitar players in the band, and I know this is a question that's been pitched to uh, to Dave, but uh, I mean, like, in terms of your bass playing now, working around three guitar players, where do you fit in in terms of the whole, uh, you know, process with writing the songs and just finding your own way in, in the midst of all that? Does, does your inner Steve Harris come out? I don't, no, I don't really think of it any different. Um... I, I think the three guitar player thing is, is is better for us because you know a lot of these records, especially the last two, there's a lot of guitar parts going on. Yeah. So you know now we can just be able to play them live. Before it was like you know when Tom it was just Tom and Derek, you know they, they would have to just pick. You know yeah. okay let's play these two guitar parts, but we're still missing that one guitar part, but we obviously can't play because we don't have a third guitar player. Yeah. So I don't think it, it really changes the strategy for me the way I think about things. Um, I'm, I'm not like, you know, I'm not like Matt Freeman from Rancid where I'm noodling all over the place. <laughs> I'm kind of, I just have my thing that I always do and yeah. that works for this band. Yeah. Um, so I don't really, I don't really approach it any different. Well, listen, Cohen, man, I've been I've been a fan uh, of the band for a while, and it I I really appreciate the fact that you guys are are taking the time to uh, you know to do the press and get the good word out there about some forty one. Uh, it, it's definitely been a pleasure talking with you today, and uh, definitely good luck uh, in 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 your tour endeavors uh, through sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty beyond. <laughs> right on, man. Awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah, appreciate appreciate you having me on.